Ariel Hawani in Houston gearing up for UFC 136 alongside Ed Soares, who of course is here for Jose Aldo. And uh, Ed, it's good to see you again. Obviously, a lot going on in your world. Just a couple yeah. minutes ago, we found out from Dana White that Leo Machida, a client yeah. of yours uh, and a good friend, is now going to fight John Jones, UFC 140, yeah. uh, the main event in Toronto. How did this come about? Actually, last night Dana called me and uh, said, hey, uh, don't say anything, but is uh, Lyoto willing to take a fight December 10th against John Jones for the title? And uh, I said, you know, yes, let me check with him, but I'm going to tell you yes. And I called Lyoto. He was at his friend's uh, birthday party, and uh, I called his phone. It didn't pick up, and then I went. To, I called his wife's phone, and, and I told her, and then she said, tell Lyoto, tell Lyoto. So I told Lyoto, and he said yes. And and then uh, I called Dana back, told him, hey, uh, he accepted. He goes, okay, I'm going to send you the bout agreement. I said, send it right now. He sent it last night. I emailed it to uh, uh, Leota's wife. And this morning when I woke up, the, uh, the signed bout agreement was in my email. I forwarded it to the UFC, and it was a done deal. Was it your understanding that the, the first choice was to have John fight Rashad Evans, and because Rashad wasn't healthy, they then chose Lyoto? You know, I, I didn't really know all, all the details of what was going on, but I, I knew that they were trying to get Lyoto a fight by the end of the year. Um, you know, uh, you know, at, at first, you know, we were really hoping to get that fight against uh, Henderson um, on November 19th, and then it ended up going to Shogun. But, you know, that's, once again, is proof that everything happens for a reason, and we were really bummed about that. Um, and then this opportunity came up. So, you know, it, it, all, it always seems to work out in the end. And did they talk to Lyoto about potentially fighting Phil Davis on that date and then Phil couldn't fight? Uh, and they never talked to us about that. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, I found out about it uh, when Dana announced it, and I was like, "Really? You know, they they never mentioned it." But uh, but I text Dana right away and said, "Hey, even though you guys didn't ask us, we accept." You know, so it, it was all good. And a lot of people were wondering what Lyoto's relationship was with Dana after the whole story came out that he didn't, uh, you know, choose to fight on August 6th. The, the Anderson Silva money, quote unquote. Did their relationship get strained a little bit because of that? No, I, I don't think it got strained. I, I, I think, uh, you know, we have a good working relationship with Dana, and um, it wasn't exactly said in the way that it was put out in the media that he wanted Anderson Silva money. But, you know, sometimes it, it gets twisted around and uh, it kind of appears that way. But, uh, or it, it, things are put out not the way that they were said. Uh, there were reasons behind the re uh, why he didn't take the fight. Um, but no, I, I don't think, I think in the beginning, you know, Dana was uh, probably a little bit frustrated. But, uh, you know, after I spoke with Dana, I spoke with Dana right after it happened. I, I was in Vegas and at a meeting with Dana, I told him. And, you know, I, I, I don't think it affected anything. You know, D Dana, you know, Lyoto's part of the UFC and, and we have a great relationship with Dana. Dana has a good relationship with Lyoto and it's all good. Uh, Dana said yes yesterday at the press conference that Anderson Silva is suffering from a bursitis in his shoulder. How is he feeling and how long do you expect him to, expect him to be out for? Um, I, I think we'll see uh, Anderson fight in the beginning of next year. You know. Did they offer him the, the Dan Henderson fight? Dan Henderson said yes, at the press conference. Did. Yeah, they did. They offered uh, they offered us that fight uh, right after he fought Okami. They offered him the fight. Um, his shoulder was already hurt uh, before the Okami fight, and we said, hey, let us go check it out before we accept. Um, and then we went in, in Brazil. We went to a, a doctor there in Sao Paulo, and the doctor said that he's going to need four to six weeks of uh, rehab. Thank God he didn't need surgery, but he just he had... Um, he had a torn tendon, I forgot, he had one torn ligament or two torn ligaments and one tendon or something like that, or not torn, but just stretched or something, and they said that he's not going to have to have surgery and that he's going to need four to six uh, weeks of rehab before he starts training again. So that was good news, but unfortunately it was bad news that he wasn't able to fight uh, Henderson on the 19th. Henderson's fighting on the 19th. We've got Chael Sonnen fighting uh, Brian Stan. Also, Michael Bisping says he wants a shot. He's fighting Jason Miller in December. In your opinion, who is next for Anderson? Whoever Dana puts in front of us is who's next for Anderson. Um, I know Anderson wants to be involved in the biggest fights possible in his career. Um, and I think, um, you know, whoever they come up with, I think it'd be a good fight. You know, first of all, Henderson has to get through, uh, Henderson has to get through uh, Shogun, most likely to be able to get a title shot. Um, and then, uh, you know, Brian Stan and Chael Shonen, it's a tough fight, uh, but Chael Shonen could also be a big fight. And uh, of course, Bisbing, you know, uh, could also be a big fight, but he's got mayhem in front of him. So, 
we'll see what happens. There are some who think that if Chael wins on Saturday, a fight against Anderson in Brazil would sell out maybe a 50,000 or 100,000 seat stadium. I'm wondering, do you think it would be smart from a, from a security standpoint to have Chael really come to Brazil to fight Anderson? I don't think I don't think the UFC or Chael would do that. But who am I to I I, I, I don't the Brazilian people don't care for Chael too much. You know what I mean? Uh, so I, you know we'll see what happens. I'm sure if that if that was to happen, uh, I'm sure they'll have increased security around Chael. Do you think uh, we've seen maybe uh, the last, you know, maybe Jose Aldo's days of fighting at 145 are numbered because he had so much trouble cutting weight and because there are some big fights now for him at 155 and if he gets by Florian, there aren't as many big fights left for him at 145. Do you think we'll eventually see him move up? I think eventually we'll see that, but I think, you know, Jose still, you know, he's, he, this time, he, uh, to me, it seemed like he was making weight much easier than he has, that I've seen even against Uriah Faber. He, he um, I don't know, he, he, it just depends, uh, but I definitely think in the future uh, we're going to see him at 155. And final question, why did uh, Big Nog fight in Toronto? Because he wanted to fight in Japan. He said he was only still 80% when we spoke to him in August after his win over Brendan Schaub. Why did he decide to come back so quickly? Well, because it was an opportunity to fight uh, Frank Mir, and and, uh, it w and he was going to fight with his brother on the card. And it was just, you know, uh, Nog never turns down an opportunity to fight, never turns down a challenge. So I think he just wants to uh, um, avenge that loss. And, and uh, the sooner he could avenge that loss, in his mind, the better, probably. You know what I just realized? Uh, it is good to be you and your partner, of course. Uh, UFC 140, you have the main event main event and then the third yeah. fight from it. Yeah, it's not a bad, uh, not a bad night for you guys. It's going to be an early Christmas. Right. Uh -huh. All right. Well, congratulations on getting the fight. Thank you for Thank the time, you. as always. No problem, man. Thank you.